So the very first thing that I did was I went on to Pinterest and I searched for the specific type of photos that I was going to want to be taking, which in this case was Dark Academia. So I created somewhat of like a vision board where I saved a bunch of photos that I thought I could potentially emulate or that really inspired me. The next thing that I did was I wrote out a physical list of all of the props and items that I was going to need for this specific photo shoot. I just had books, candles, I collected a few of my pages that I wrote with my fountain pen, tarot card deck, few jewelry pieces. Writing out an actual list of all of the props and things that I was going to need really helps me just focus and not get too overwhelmed because I can kind of get a bit frantic so I wasn't running up and down the stairs being like, oh I forgot my coffee, I forgot my glasses, I forgot whatever. I just gathered it all up together before I started shooting. Usually what I would do is I would set up an app on my phone that connects to my camera that allows me to control when I'm taking a photo. But in this case, I was using my phone to film me filming myself on my camera, if that makes sense. So um, I just ended up doing a video and I don't think it really sacrificed too much quality. It did obviously make my photos a little bit more narrow and I forgot to consider that but I kind of forgot about that but it's okay it turned out really well I then uploaded all of the footage and the few pictures that I took on my camera. I uploaded them to my computer, which is where I then took screenshots and I also tagged all of the photos that I liked the best with a red tag. And then I airdropped them to my phone, which is where I edit my pictures. And editing is probably my favorite part. It's just so much fun and it's so satisfying to like see the difference.
The two apps that I use are Lightroom, and then the second app that I use is VSCO. I open the photo in Lightroom and the first thing that I do is click on auto and I just see what it does to the picture and usually I change it completely but some of the things I leave so exposure I usually leave at zero or take it down a little bit contrast I don't really like it to be too contrasted but the highlights and or the whites depending on what the photo looks like I will always take down I go into the color tab and I click on mix so on the red color, I always bring the hue up a bit to the orange side, and then I'll go up saturation a bit. On the orange tab, I leave the hue in the middle, and then I usually take the saturation up. In the yellow tab, I take the hue down towards the orange part a little bit, and the saturation up. The green, I always take the hue all the way down to the left side, and I usually leave it saturation in the middle, Sometimes I'll take it down, sometimes I'll take it up, depending on what the photo looks like. For the blues, for the light blue and for the dark blue, I take both of them saturation all the way down. But usually what I do is I check. First I take the saturation all the way up to see where these blues are even at in my photo. And then I'll make sure I'm paying attention to those areas. And then I always go into the detail tab and I take the sharpening up. And then I go into VSCO, and this is where I add filters. I like two of the filters on here, and I like combining the two of them. I add the M3 filter. This looks like dark academia to me. So basically I take it up to usually around three or four, plus three or plus four, and then I save that. And then I have to re-upload that same picture that I just added the filter to so that I can add the second filter, which I add M5. And this one I am much more light-handed with because it's very, very saturated. So I usually take that one up around two or three, usually not much more than that because it's very, 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 very strong. The filters kind of lighten the photo a bit, so I usually take the exposure down a little bit and the contrast maybe down a tiny, tiny bit. And the main things that I use are grain, which I take up around three or four. And then the fade, I barely, barely use this at all. This is like very, it's a very noticeable difference. Even if you bring it up just a slight bit, it changes quite a bit. So I usually take it up to just 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 maybe at most. And then I use split tone and I go into the highlight tint and I click on that cream color and I take that up around maybe like three and then shadow tint I go to the yellow tab and I take that up just barely usually plus one or less and that's all I do for my editing I have other apps like afterlight um, which I do use sometimes if I want to add dust or specks to my photos but I usually don't do that too often unless I feel like it needs a little extra spooky flavor to it. Mm.